How's it? Welcome to my kitchen. Today, in a lockdown special, we're making beer. What I'm making in particular is a South African Pale Ale. Now, I didn't invent this, and I didn't make the recipe. I actually bought the grains and the hops from a company in Cape Town called Beer Labs, and they shipped it up to me. This recipe is going to make 20 liters of beer. So the first thing you need is your grain. This grain's already been pre-mulled, and they will do this for you at the shop if you ask them to in advance. That's a total of 4.3 kilograms. Then you need hops. And this hops is called a Southern Passion. 17 grams go in for one hour of your boil. And then the final 10 minutes, you add another 14 grams. As well as that, you need some yeast. And then most important, water and good quality water. And to make this 20 liter recipe, you're gonna need 30 liters of water. So I'd recommend getting a, a bottled spring water. If you've got good quality water at home, that's cool, use that. And I've used the water at my house before. Uh, unfortunately though, they are doing some work on the lines, so I can't really guarantee that it's gonna be clean and, and as, as clean and pure as I want it to be. Although I've used it in the past and it's been cool. As well as that, you're gonna need some equipment. So first, so just some rubber tubing, and you're gonna need this to decant your beer out of your pots into your fermenter. Then, big spoon to get things stirred up. A thermometer, because temperature is very important in this. And a hydrometer. And a hydrometer is for measuring the specific gravity of your beer. And this will indicate to you when your beer is ready to bottle, and also give you an indication of the final alcohol percentage. As well as that, we need a bag. So this is just a cloth bag, and this is used to put the grain in, in the pot. Keeps it all together, and it makes it easier, instead of having to have a separate pot after you've made your mash, to, to boil in, to boil your water in. As well as that, because I don't have 30 liters of pots, I'm actually gonna do this in two halves. So I'm gonna halve the recipe and do it twice. So to do that, I'm gonna need a gram scale for my hops, and a kitchen scale to measure the grain, so I can divide that in two. And then the other most important thing about making beer is sanitation. So I've already mixed up the sanitizer solution. It's a Nolan sanitizer and you mix five mils to seven liters of water. You can also use a unscented uh, bleach if you want in a very low concentration, but then you do have to rinse it very well. I'll put a link to this that I'm using in the description below. The last thing you're gonna need is pots. I've worked pretty much all my pots on the stove here. This is a 30 meter stock pot, and then I've got three others, and that's gonna be my main boiling pot, and then the rest are gonna be for sparge water to keep it at temperature for when we finished with the mash, and we're gonna start boiling the wort of the beer. Now, I've made beer before, but I've only ever made it in this and this is a four and a half litre carboy and you put a bung in the top with an airlock and this makes a great beer but unfortunately times like this where beer is not available we can't make four and a half litres of beer so i've decided to upgrade and today i'll be making beer in this this is a 30 litre container i uh, borrowed it from a buddy of mine and this we're going to use to make a final 20 liters of beer. All right, let's get started. So the first step in the process is to sanitize. Now, I've already spoken about my sanitizing solution. What I've already got in here is the beer, the tap for the, uh, the fermenter. I've had that soaking for a little bit and I'm just gonna reassemble this so I can sanitize the fermenter as well. So to sanitize this fermenter, I want to make sure I just coat the whole inside of it with my sanitizing liquid. Like I said, this is a no rinse liquid, so I don't have to worry about rinsing it out. And I've already given everything a good clean. So I'm going to make sure that I coat the entire 
inside of our fermenter with sanitizing liquid. Now this is very important that anything that comes into contact with your final product must be sanitized. Otherwise you run the risk of bacteria and you can completely ruin your beer. And that'll be a big pity because once you've completed this process and put it into your fermenter, this is gonna still take two weeks. Two weeks, you have to wait until it's ready and then you can bottle. And then after you've bottled, you're still in for at least another 10 days, absolute minimum, for your second fermentation in the bottle. So you don't wanna mess this up, especially when there's no other beer available. Like I said, you need to make sure that every single surface that comes into contact with the beer gets sanitized. Now that I've sanitized my fermenter bucket, I'm just going to sanitize all the other tools that may come into contact later on in the process with the final product. So that's definitely going to be my thermometers, which I will put in here. I've got my jug in here, which I will leave in here. I'm going to put the thermometers in. My hydrometer. Although this won't come into contact with beer that is going to be put back into the fermenter. We'll tap off beer to measure our specific gravity. Spoon, definitely going to come in contact. And then absolutely our rubber pipes that we're going to use to do any decanting. So you want to make sure that you get these nicely full of sanitizer so that they are nice and clean, especially on the inside. Okay, I'm just going to set this aside for the moment. The next thing we need to do is get our water on the go. So I'm going to get six liters of water going in this pot and that's what we're going to use to make our mash. So our target temperature here is 75 degrees, so not a boil. 75 degrees and you use your thermometer to make sure that you're getting to the right temperature. So I'm going to do that now. So that may take some time to get up to temperature. So in the meantime, let's work on measuring our ingredients to split this recipe in half. First thing I'm going to start with is the grain. So we've got 4.36 kilograms of grain, so I want to halve that. So I'm going to aim for 2.18 kgs. And that's 1.18 kg. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to put it in my bag so I can measure out the final kilogram.
And this is the final kilogram. So I'm also going to add this to the bag and then I'm going to set it aside until the water gets up to temperature. Next, we need to do the same with the hops. Now, the hops have to be measured with a gram scale, and that's because you have to measure very low weights. So the first hop addition that we're putting in is 17 grams in total. So that's eight and a half grams that we have to put in with our half batch. And our sec second hop addition is 14 grams total. So we have to put seven grams in. So I'm now going to measure those small quantities out on a gram scale. That's hop edition one. I'm going to put it in the green bowl. I think this is green. Yep. And then hop edition two, we're going to measure seven grams. seven grams exactly. Now it is quite important to get these measurements right because it can quite drastically affect the flavor of your beer. The other thing I want to say is that I've got no idea if this is going to work as a half recipe done twice. I'm going to try and account for a couple of things. I'm not going to cool my water too much at the end because I'm going to have to wait until I've done a whole nother batch to get it into the fermenter so that the final temperature of everything is the right temperature to add the yeast to. So I'm kind of winging it here, but let's see if it works. So next, let's check on the temperature of our water. All right, we're almost there, just under 70 degrees. So we'll give it a couple of more minutes to get up to 75. All right, so our temperature's just got to about 75 degrees. I've made this little contraption with cloth pegs to hold my thermometer. And now what we're gonna do is we're gonna drop in our grain bag into this pot. And you just wanna make sure that it's completely saturated and that all the grain is wet and evened out inside there. That's a good place to use your spoon to make sure that you just push it out of it. Now you want to make sure that you don't let the grain into your water, otherwise you're going to have some issues with your beer. So now this needs to sit at about 60 degrees, or 66 degrees actually, for one hour. Now anything between sort of 65 and 68 is going to be okay, but you're targeting 66 degrees so keep on checking it keep on monitoring it, adjusting the heat to make sure you keep this at 66 degrees then just before this is done you're going to make sure you want to get another nine liters of water up to 80 degrees and this is going to be your sparge water so what's going to happen is after one hour we're going to remove this bag and then we're going to use these nine liters of water to drain and to rinse out the contents of this bag we're going to keep them we're going to keep all the grain inside but we're just going to pour it over and we're going to rinse the contents of this bag into this pot and that's going to be our wort and then we are going to boil that for another hour all right so it's been an hour since we put our grain into water to make a mash now we need to remove the grain bag and we need to use our sparge water to rinse all the proteins and sugars that have been released from the grains out of the bag now we don't want to squeeze the bag we just want to flush it out and rinse it out 
with the, the additional nine liters of sparge water we have. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna make a little platform on top of my pot with some of these bits of rotisserie that I found. So I'm gonna pull the bag out. And I'm gonna put it on I'm going to put it on top of these metal poles. Now you'll find there's quite a lot of moisture that's still within this bag and it will take quite a while to drain out. Just try and keep it all in the pot and not like make a mess like me. Now I don't know if, I don't think this is probably the right way to do it, but it's definitely a way to do it. And it's uh, really just use a way that works for you. You know, there's a lot of people that get quite sensitive about home brewing, but you know what? At the end of the day, if it works for you, it works for you. As long as you get a good beer at the end. All right. So my contraption thing's working here, and now I'm going to start slowly putting my 80 degree water over this bag because I just want to drain all the sugars out slowly. If you do it too quickly you're just going to make a mess. Alright so I've managed to get seven of the nine liters into this pot sparging and the pot is full because this pot now needs to boil. So I think it might even be a bit too full. There's only about a liter and a half left. So what I'm going to do is just remove now my grain bag. Let everything that's left inside there just drain out. It's extremely hot. Don't burn your fingers. And now what we're going to do Let's move that aside. Now what we have to do is bring this pot to the boil. And we need to boil for one hour. So I'm going to get this pot onto heat. And what I'm going to do is as this pot boils down, I'll add the remaining two liters of water. I'll just monitor what the final level is. I'm expecting to get 10 liters of a final product out of this pot. So I'll just keep monitoring that. And if I need to, I'll add a little bit more water as we go along. So they've got 10 liters at the end. So just get this pot up to a boil and then we're going to throw in the hops and then we're going to boil it for an hour. Alright, our water's come up to a boil. So what I'm going to do is put in the first hops. This is the uh, eight and a half grams of hops. Now we're going to let this boil for an hour. Just be aware, putting the hops in may make it foam up. So you might want to reduce the heat for just a moment. All right, it's been exactly 50 minutes. It's got 10 minutes to go on the boil. So now is when you want to add your second hops. So I'm just going to throw that in. And now 10 more minutes to boil and then you want to cut the heat and you want to cool this pot down as quickly as possible. So what I would suggest doing is getting an ice bath or something ready in your sink. And when this is ready, you're going to take it off and you're going to put it into that bath. And you're going to try and chill this pot down to 22 degrees in 30 to 45 minutes at the most before you put it in the fermenter. So get that ready in the meantime, but remember from now on, anything that touches your liquid needs to be sanitized. So make sure that you sanitize all the equipment, make sure that nothing gets into the pot, make sure you clean and sanitize your hands as well before you carry on. Okay, it's been about 10, well, it's been exactly 10 minutes on the stove. I've taken it off the boil and I've immediately put it into this cold water. I didn't make the water too cold because I didn't want to give it too much of a shock, but the water's already warmed up, so I'm gonna to start to change the water and then I'm gonna introduce the ice packs that I've got here.
Now remember, it's important not to get anything into your wort. So you might, might want to leave the lid on. It's going to slow down your cooling, so it's a bit of a trade-off. So if you're sure you, nothing's going to get inside, you're good to go. Now there's a couple of other ways you can do this. You can make a bunch, you can, you can do it in your bathtub if you want, full of ice. And then you get something called an immersion chiller, which you actually stick in to the wort just before it finishes boiling. And then you run cold water through that. And then what you can do is you can run cold water through it, through an ice bath first, so you have a pre-chiller. And then that really helps bringing down the temperature of this quite quickly. Now I don't have one of those because um, I'm just a simple home guy. Uh, but you can get them and I've looked at them. They're not that cheap, but maybe if I find myself making a lot of beer, it's something I'll eventually invest in. So I'm going to keep changing the water here, keep changing the ice and get this temperature down to 22 degrees. All right, it's been about 10, 15 minutes and I've Changed the water a couple of times and I've been stirring it to try and just circulate what's in here a bit uh, and what's in contact with the outside and these ice packs just try and cool it quicker and I'm down at 50 degrees. So I am not going to take it all the way down to 22 degrees before I put it in the fermenter purely because I'm now going to have to do a whole another batch of this and that's going to take two hours so I know this is going to have a little bit of time to cool down on its own before I add the second batch to it. So I'm going to be aiming for, I think, a little under 40 degrees before I put in the fermenter and then do the second batch to get the full 20 liters. Okay, so I've got the temperature down to about 38 degrees. And now what I'm going to do is I'm going to siphon this into my fermentation bucket. And the reason I want to siphon it and not just pour it in is that while it's been cooling down, there's been a bunch of stuff that's really going to have collected at the bottom, and that's called the break. It's like bits from the uh, the grain and it's bits of hops and it's a whole bunch of gunk that you don't necessarily want in your fermentation because it could give you quite an odd taste your beer that you don't like. So that's the reason I'm going to siphon it because then I will be able to see when I'm getting close there and stop the siphon. So what I'm going to do is use this tube. I'm just going to use this bottle as a starter and then I'm going to siphon it into this bucket. What's cool about this is it's going to give me a... Um, a lot of aeration as it goes in which is what you want because that's going to really help with fermentation of the beer so let's siphon it All right, so I've ended up with just under 10 liters of beer here, which is a good start. Uh, now let me do it all again. All right, it's a few hours later, and eventually all the brewing is done. We ended up with about 18 liters in here. And then the last thing we need to add is the yeast. So I've already mixed this packet of yeast up with 100 mils of warm water. And then I've left it to stand as per the instructions. So I'm just gonna add this in and then give this a bit good stir. Now the final thing we need to do is just take a measurement with a hydrometer and what this is going to do is just tell us what the specific gravity is of the beer as it is now and that will give us a good indication of what the alcohol percentage may be when it's complete. So we'll take a measurement here and we'll take a measurement at the end and then we can calculate the percentage. Also towards the end of the fermentation when you take a hydrometer measurement twice in a row and it hasn't changed you know that your fermentation has stopped. So I'm just going to take half a tube sample first. Okay. 
which I'm going to discard just so it's cleaned out the tap. Now we'll take a measurement. So the measurement's a bit lower than expected, but um, I don't really know what to say about that. I've never used one before. So my beer has always come out okay. So I'm not too concerned. I don't even know if it's that accurate, this particular one. So I'm gonna write down what it is. Uh, I'll do a bit of looking up, but that's fine. So what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna put this away in a dark place. You don't want any sunlight and you wanna keep it at a constant temperature, somewhere between 18 and 24 degrees for two weeks. And after two weeks, we'll be ready to bottle. And then once we've bottled, we have to wait two more weeks and then we can drink the beer. So if you enjoyed this video, please give it a like and consider subscribing to the channel. And until next time, stay safe.